Hey guys, Queen Crazy here with my next video. Yes, Wrestling Rant 23. I do count my Friday flashbacks as part of that. So if you wondered where 22 was, you know that was it. Right, as you may have noticed, guys, I have been getting slightly more pissed off at wrestling as of Sunday, which is obvious because who wouldn't after what Cena did? I did some thinking, and I've noticed since the start of the year, or in fact since a couple of months back, this... The pay-per-views have been a bit, well, yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone's noticed that. And the thing is, there's one thing I can probably say is a reason for this. The structure of the pay-per-view card, because that is so important. It is so important, people. Because the pay-per-view needs to be structured in the right way to effectively get the best out of what's available on it. Now, this has been highlighted within, with the WWE Creative doing some stupid things with pay-per-view cards recently. Putting Alberto Del Rio vs Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship, which should have been a main event match, as the first match, the opening match on the card. How stupid do those people think we are? In fact, putting Alex Riley and Miz second on the card at Over the Limit, and the one thing I hate is what, what they used to do in the, in the early 2000s. Put a Divas match between a really big match and the title main event on pay-per-view. If you don't believe me, WrestleMania X8 from Hogan and Rock, then there was a Fatal 4-Way Divas match for the women's title, and then Triple H Jericho, right? That disrupted the flow of the whole fucking night. Because imagine Hogan, Rock, followed straight after by the title. Everyone would be buzzing for it. So, I took it under my discretion to make this a little thing of what I believe makes the best pay-per-view card. Yeah, what what structure can make the best pay-per-view card? Now, I've looked at pay-per-view cards from DVDs on that pile over there. If you can see them behind me, there's a pile of wrestling DVDs about there, I think. I can't point very well. This camera is a bit shit at me realising where they are. It's kind of mirrored. So this is my right hand, left hand. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, and I think this is what we should start with. Match one on a pay-per-view card, I think, always should be an exciting match between two people who can make it exciting. Get the crowd up their feet and make them get going. I mean, if you took, for example, the Ziggler-Kofi Kingston match that began Capital Punishment, you would have thought it would have been a good pay-per-view. That was the kind of match you'd need, because that gets the crowd on their feet, saying, yes, we're going to see something epic to start this pay-per-view off. And that is what you need from every pay-per-view, I think. Match two needs a tag title match, or at least a tag team match. Because, you may have noticed, Capital Punishment had only singles matches, right? In that, in that case, people were going to get annoyed with that, because they wanted some tag team. They wanted something different. So we complain about our tag team tag team titles so much, then when they don't put them on the, t on the card, we all complain about that. Some people. But, um, I just think that a tag team match, it gives the use to show talent that aren't being used. Or, in some cases, show the tag teams you've got. Because, what, the, the Justin Gabriel and Heath Slater, members of the core, are probably the only legitimate tag teams. Oh, actually, I'd probably say only Slater and Gabriel are the only legitimate tag team in WWE right now who've actually got a significant amount of build behind them. Yeah, the others are absolute crap. Because I would never consider David Otunga and Michael McGillagutty worthy tag team champions. But basically, if you, and this is where the Sin Cara, Daniel Bryan, T Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase match came in at Capital Punishment. This should have been in it. You're not using these guys who are fantastic in-ring workers. Use them. Because it would have been the best thing in the world to do. And in the most cases, it would have worked. Um... I think it would, it's a good way just to show talent that you people want to see but aren't being used. It's a good way of doing it. It may be thrown together, but it might be worth it if you put two feuds together, tag team the guys together, see how their chemistry works, you might actually have a good tag team right there. Match number three on a pay-per-view card of my choosing would be the first or first or both mid-card title matches. I don't know which one we put forward. But just keep the audience going, and if it's, if it's as exciting as match one is, either with or without a mid-card title, it would burn the crowd out. Because the crowd need to be kept on their feet with good and exciting action, okay? And I think a mid-card title should be that. Giving you goodness, look at these people going, okay, they could rise, we need to show how good these guys are. Instead of just burying them. Yeah, the main event buries them, this will not be a good chance to do it here. Just keep them going. Match four... I will have to say this, right? I hate it when the Divas matches are really late in the card. I hated it when you had 
The WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble, followed up by the Rump that burst Divas Fatal Four Way match, which hardly lasted any time. Then you had the Rumble itself. I would have just preferred to not have them that late in the card because I don't know. I just unless it's a meaningful feud like Lita Trish or Mickey James Trish or basically anything with Trish Stratus in it, then there's no real point sticking it anywhere on the card higher than the middle point because everybody had a pay per view. I don't, I don't do that. I mean, I obviously did this when I did my Capital Punishment with you. I know this isn't a Divas match, but when the Evan Bourne Jack Swagger match came out, I had my bathroom break. And I just shouldn't do that because I'm a guy reviewing these things for you, the audience, who are watching my videos. And, I, and some people say, oh, the Divas match is my bathroom break because it's awful. Okay? The thing is, if it's before the main event, I can see your point. But... When the crowds are burnt out following three good matches, which should be good in my opinion, to keep you interested, then then put the Divas match slap bang in the middle so you can go ha go out, rest, energise yourself. And in fact, if they make the Divas matches longer, then it will actually be easier for you to do that. You'll be re-energised, you'll be happy, and you'll be ready to go on with the rest of the pay-per-view knowing that that has gone out of the way and you can really get onto the big stuff. And that... That is a good thing. Because these Divas matches could go on later in the card. They kill the crowd. They kill the crowd. They go, oh, we can just not give a shit now. The best match of the night's already happened. Blah, 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 blah. And that, I know I've seen it a few times. If you've watched pay-per-views and you think the crowd dies after a specific Divas match, then you will know exactly what I mean. Then, I believe we should get a small intermission. Because there are too many promos on pay-per-views now. WrestleMania X7 is a prime example where a few promos can go a long way. And... For the most part, if you're going to have something in the middle of a pay-per-view after a small match, build up the excitement for the next pay-per-view, put the advert for the pay-per-view, and then the champions of the main two titles do their promos, and then leave it at that. Because you don't need a promo for every single match, people. You don't need a, a talking promo for every match that's on the card, because I've seen that happen in recent pay-per-views, and it's pissing me off. So... Leave it at the two champions and leave it at that because that's what people are paying to see. Unless a mid-card match is that fucking good, you'd actually want to listen to them talk. Yeah. Then we have a gimmick, and then next up a gimmick match to fuel up the crowd's interest after the Divas match beforehand. Because if it's either for the other mid-card title, I would have thought so. If not, if it's a rivalry, use a gimmick match. I don't say, I say don't use these too often. If a feud has enough steam building behind it, you don't need a gimmick match, then go ahead and use it. But if you're going to put a gimmick match, to, something to re-energise the crowd, a gimmick match is the way to go. Because it's going to get people interested. That's why Money in the Bank is good, because you've got two ladder matches of the night, which will keep people on the edge of their seats. That's why I'm looking forward to next July's pay-per-view. So, yeah. I think it will be great to have something like that, but never mind. Match 6. Now, this has obviously happened in recent times. The first world title match is always just before the end of the pay-per-view. Now, this has always in recent times been the World Heavyweight Championship. Now, putting the first world title match on now would be a great thing. Because one, you get a title match a bit earlier than you expected and it will be something you want. And I just think it's better because you can then make room for the seventh match on a card. Okay, I normally think pay-per-views are eight matches long. If you've been following, you'll understand my point there. That the seventh match should be the biggest feud that does not have the world title involved. Now, this is obvious. Miz Riley was the biggest match at, at Capital Punishment, not involving a world title. So why the hell wasn't it there? It had steam building behind it. It had energy and aggression behind it. This would have been a great match. Because people were shocked to see this match on second on the Capital Punishment card. Because, you see, you, if you look at my point here, CM Punk Rey Mysterio was a fantastic match, for what it was worth, anyway. I'm sure it was only two and three quarter stars, but it was a good match, right? That had no build. That had no build. It didn't feel like a big feud. So, I would have stuck that earlier in the card to keep people going, right, early on. Then I would have put Riley and Miz, because people, I could hear the crowd when, when they were heard this match was being done now, and they were shocked at this. Okay, so I would say to WWE, if you've got a feud with a lot of steam, actually, actually, let me rephrase this. If a match has a video promo before it, do not put that as the opener. I mean, the only problem I would say is at WrestleMania X7, I would not have put Jericho William Regal as the opening match. That's just me. That's just me. But, because it's mostly because it had a video promo behind it. I don't like that. 
I would put a video promo match later on in the card because it may, it matters more. You don't put a video promo behind every match and go, okay, they're all important. If they're not, some are more important than the other. And if you put the seventh match on the card, the one before the final match, then you'll be happy there. I can tell. And the final match has to be taken into account for what happened at WrestleMania the last couple of years. And for the most fact, it's the most hyped match, whether it be the WWE title, the world title match, or in the case of Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, put that at the last, put that at the last head. Because it'll depend on the importance of the match. If it's big enough, you'll stick it there. And I don't mean sticking Cena on the end because you can give a happy ending. That isn't what a pay-per-view ending is meant to be. You're supposed to make people go, oh, oh God, he may have retained the title, but I felt I've seen something good here. Right? We haven't heard that for about five or six pay-per-views running, so don't, don't think about that in a bad way. But the crowd wants something epic to be able to leave their show by and think, I've seen something good here. I've seen a good ending to a pay-per-view. The ending of Raw in recent weeks has seen some great wrestling matches. The Triple Threat match last week was a good example. But the only thing is, at a pay-per-view, you've got to follow the same structure. Put a bloody good match at the end of the pay-per-view so you can actually tell if something's been, something's been worth something. Because, sure, putting Cena at the end of it is going to be good for the money, but it's not going to be good for people like me. So... Give them, if it's the most hyped, like our truth Cena was, okay, I would have kept that at the end. But the end, but the match would have been rewritten if it was done by me. Plain and simple. And I, I, I look at the most hyped matches, the one that we've all been looking forward to, the one we've been paying our money to see. We still wanted to see our truth give Cena a run for his money, and he didn't give it. We wanted at WrestleMania to see Miz run Cena ragged and then see Rock happen. But that didn't happen in the way we wanted it to either. It was quite slow, like Dan Trodden. And the, the cage match at Extreme Rules is a prime example of how this should be done. It was the most, I wouldn't say it was the most hyped, but it was definitely, no, actually it wasn't the most hyped. It was the one that we were, I was most looking forward to. The ladder match was one that we were looking for. I would have put Christian Alberto Del Rio as the ending because it would have meant something epic has happened. That Christian has finally won the title and we've witnessed something good. That would have been a great pay-per-view closer. And you see my point here. So it doesn't matter if there's a world title to it or not. If it's a great match that we all know is going to be good and we have the importance factor on, it will be good. It will be the match that will say, we've witnessed something here. And I think if pay-per-view is followed, this structure, this card-building structure like they have in the past, it will actually turn WWE's fortunes around. Because I've heard people go mental about this. That were saying, oh, why are they putting this match so early in the card? Why are they not even putting this match on the card in reference to Sheamus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania? You look at it and go, they're not structuring cards right. And I think this is one of the reasons why they've failed in recent times, because they're not doing it right. And that is my two cents, everybody. And that's the end of my rant. Yes, another rant. Get in. Guys, you one thing I will want to say, the Q&A ends on Saturday. The questions, are go the moderator will be taken down next Saturday. So if you want to have not put your questions in, you've only got one week to do it. So please, click on the my name thing up there. Go to my question moderator and ask your questions. I've got quite a lot so far and I'm really, really happy for your support. If, you, if you're watching this thing, it's the first time you've seen me and you like what you're hearing, you want to hear more, click that subscribe button. I love the support, and I thank you all for giving me some more. And I, I will see you guys next week, because the Q&A is next week. And I will tell you this also. The week after is the next Friday flashback. So keep that in your diaries. Friday flashback, two weeks from now. It's Survivor Series 2003. I hope you're looking forward to that as much as I am, guys. I will see you next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Because in the meantime, I have to go and watch the F1. See ya.